All right, guys. Oh, hey. Welcome. <laughs> Hope you guys had a happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah, welcome to the Reborn Podcast. My name's Ashley Horner with my co-host, Elena Del Rey. What's up? We just finished uh, Thanksgiving. Yeah, sorry Actually. we didn't see you guys last week mm-hmm. on Thursday. How was your Thanksgiving? It was good. Small, simple this year, you know, with everything going on. Do you, uh, what is your uh, Thanksgiving? Do you turkey or ham? So, no, my family, so we're, we're Italian, so we oh, do, meatballs, la- we do lasagna. Spaghetti. Lasagna. Lasagna. Yeah, lasagna is the big dish. Is there dish. like a special lasagna? Yeah, my mom, we call her her Picasso lasagna because it literally takes her like seven hours to make it. She makes like a special sauce. We do like all homemade sauce, all homemade pasta, bachamel, if you know what that is, uh, which is really good. So that's our big dish for the day. We do lasagna. Has this been a tradition? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's been like this my entire life. Oh, okay. We just started incorporating uh, like the traditional Thanksgiving foods because my brother-in-law is Irish and from Buffalo. And he's like, what the hell is all this? <laughs> so, so, but you still have the lasagna, but you just have... Yeah, like we, traditional side items. Yeah, like we have stuffing. like the stuffing okay. and the the green bean casserole, yeah. which is my personal fave, uh-huh. and like you know mashed potatoes stuff yeah. like that. But we never have had a turkey or a ham. What about for Christmas then? We do. Uh, it's called like the seven fish dinner. <laughs> you don't even do turkey or ham. No, oh my we gosh. don't. We do wow. Italian all year long. Uh, <laughs> it's like seven different types of fish in a pasta, and like with marinara and everything. That, and so. that sounds disgusting. Oh, <gasps> you don't like fish. I do like fish. I don't know if I like seven types it's of like fish shrimp in a pasta. and like scallops. Oh, okay. like it's okay. so it's mussels yeah. too and like okay. stuff like that. It's not like you know halibut and trout. I feel like and you like, should just invite me to your Christmas family. I dinner. always have leftovers. <laughs> You're always welcomed over. Yeah. We can always do a big Italian meal one day. Yeah, I think I'll I'll bring I need my to try meatballs. This. You love them. <laughs> <laughs> How was your cool. Thanksgiving? My Thanksgiving, what? Well, I was actually here working yeah. on Thanksgiving. Yeah, you I, were sending me texts. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah. I the week before that, we went up to Ohio and celebrated Thanksgiving and Christmas a week earlier. Oh, nice. Um, with Blue side of the family, uh, and then Thanksgiving Day, we were closed here at American Brew and. We just took the opportunity to get a lot of things done, cleaning out the grease trap, um, Got shiny new lacquered tables. the tables, just stuff that it's kind of hard to do when we are open. open. And now that the sun is setting, it's just, it's, um, it's easier to do whenever we have like a, a yeah. day that, that it's closed. But man, I've been um, coming been back. It's, it, yeah, it's really hard for me to honestly take any time off. I think that that's one of the, the pros and cons to owning a business and kind of even being your own entrepreneur is that, yeah, you can, you can take a break, but I feel like every time that I have ever tried doing this, whenever I come back, the work is like twice Twice as much. much, And it's not that, it's not that I didn't, you know, everything here at American Brew was taken care of, you know, like we have a great team. We do. I think we it's really just do. for the Ashley Horner co side of things, um, going into like the Black Friday stuff, you know, yeah. we have the clothing line of Valkyrie, everything, the American screen printing. Um, we are in the process of closing the gym or we did close the gym, yeah. but moving everything out. So and you had the boys patching up holes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was, uh, it's been pretty crazy. And then, um, we're opening up a new space about 20 minutes away down in, in Norfolk. So it's everything is just, it's been really, then really you throw stressful. the holidays on top of that. Holidays are stressful. Yeah. But hopefully we'll settle in, you know, yeah, try to enjoy yourself a little we bit. We haven't, I was actually talking to, um, to blue and I'm not like the hard work and just like the hustle, like the nonstop go, go, go. It's like, I'm not a stranger to that right. lifestyle, that work because it's, we, I always get to pick like when I work and whenever I don't work. And I think that, and I do love what I do. I, I do love the hustle and the grind when it comes to, to business and to just even like the training side of things. But man, last night I was just like, I was telling blue, I was like, I just need a break. I just want to sit down on the couch and like, I can't like, we, we can't catch a break. It's just one thing yeah. after the other. And You know, and he keeps saying, like, you know, we just got to get through, like, the next couple weeks and we just got to focus on, like, this week, which is so true. But, you know, sometimes I need to be reminded that, like, you know, don't worry or don't think about, like, everything that's to come, like, in the next month and, like, with change is to just focus literally on the next 24 hours. Day by day. I have a really bad habit of um, giving myself 
too much to accomplish in one day. You like to overload. I know. I that. like to yeah. overload. And so yeah. I wake up at five or, at, you know, 4 a.m. to try to get work done and um, whenever I can because, you know, we have like all the boys and everything. So I have high expectations of myself whenever I've set a list of things to accomplish um, and I don't accomplish those things in the, like, whenever that day is done. I, I get... I don't know. I get super overwhelmed or just stressed out because I think that I need to be working more yeah. and uh, it's tough. But then I, right now it's just been super, super busy, really busy. Um, I'm ready for a break, but I think you, you deserve one. I think with the holidays, Yeah, but I consider my break. It, whenever we were up in Ohio, I was still actually working. I, it was yeah. just like more disconnected type work. You just need just just have an Ashley day. Today's my day. But Today's Lena's day. This but is you're my working. Day. This is not a day. This is but considered this work. is but this is not. I don't consider this work. You can still work and have fun with it. Okay, but, but see, this different. is this is where I could argue with you because I think everything that I do, no matter, even like you do can you, say cleaning out the grease trap. Was like, I fun? actually, I, like, think it's fun. Like, I, like, love that stuff. Are you, like, one of those people that watches, like, cleaning videos? Or, like, oh, No, I don't shit, have time to watch relaxing. cleaning videos. You never <laughs> watch, like, power washing videos? I love that shit. I'm like, oh, my God, yes. Get that moss off that wall. Like, I love shit like that. No, I've never watched a power cleaning video. It's literally relaxing, <laughs> and I think you need to watch it. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. You need to, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that would be good therapy for me. But um, it, that's part of the... Like, I love what I do. It's hard for me. Like, any time when people say, like, when do you have a break? I'm like, well, any time with my boys. When I shut my eyes. That's, yeah. <laughs> I sleep when I'm dead. <laughs> but I feel like any time with my, with my boys, like, that is my break. Yeah. In a way. Um, it is hard. Like, I, I take, I feel like I try to take breaks, like, pockets of breaks during the day to, like, revive and to re-energize myself. But, um Ultimately, I love it. And that's kind of why, or it is the reason why I decided to shut down American Sled Dogs. Yes. Because I realized that um, a business like American Brew and a business like the gym, American Sled Dogs, is that I cannot be in both spaces. Because you know how I like to be really involved with everything. Yeah. I can't be, I can't meet my own personal expectations of how businesses ran the experience a customer or a client would get. I can't meet those expectations by splitting myself in half and only being able to devote half of my time to like at a gym and then the other half of my time at a place like American Brew. And I, I love I love them both equally. And so that's why I made the decision to kind of pursue American Brew and, and kind of uh, baby this restaurant, watch it grow a little bit um, and put more of my time, effort, energy, money into this business. Um, because I also, I find this business extremely challenging and yeah. I think that's why I love it. There's so I many have, aspects to it. Is, I don't have any background in like, you know, running a restaurant. And I've <laughs> learned like, a lot. Yeah. I've learned a lot. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's, a, and I was looking at the latte art down there and it's like looking hella good. I'm right. like, wow, you guys have left me. The I want dust. a competition between yes. all of us. I mean, I know we Liz should. would like sweep us, but it's mm. fine. It's Yours all good. good. Yours have gone good. It's, it's their hearts. Now they don't look so much like butts anymore. <laughs> they look like actual hearts. Yeah. I want to be able to do like leaves and shit. That's yeah. my goal for like, by my year mark at American Brew, I want to be able to do like leaves. How do you learn your latte art? Are you watching videos? I watch videos and I just experiment every time. Sometimes there's one customer here. I always, I'm like, all right, it's time. Latte art time. I was like, what do we think it is today? And he's yeah. like, we always, he in, we like always interpret the clouds yeah. and be like, we I always see. interpret the <laughs> latte art that I give him. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I'm just practicing, trying, just trying to get my craft down, yeah. you know, yeah. but I'll get there. I'll yeah. get there. I'll post more videos. I've been, I've been taking a lot of videos. I just don't know how to fucking edit them. So, oh, really? I can help you Yeah, I know. I need some help in that. So please Splice. Me. Splice. Yeah. I okay. can help you edit it. Yeah. Are you on TikTok? I'm not on TikTok. I'm not on TikTok. Well, I am on TikTok. I watch I Instagram TikTok. reels and I get yeah. sucked into it for hours. I'm like, this is why I didn't download TikTok. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I, I, I get too distracted too easily. Yeah. And it gets in the way of my day. So I'm like, I can't do it. Did you do a turkey trot or anything? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> my family signed up for a turkey trot one year. We're like, okay, let's all do it. La, la, la. It was like 
We're like, they can eat, you could even walk it. I was like, you know damn well I'm going to walk that. We woke up so hungover the next day, we said, fuck that. And then we continued <laughs> to drink. <laughs> <laughs> so no turkey trot. No, to- no turkey trot. Did you trot work out us. on things? Or what did you do? It how, was, was your, how was your fitness the week of Thanksgiving? Because oh, we are getting yeah. into the holidays. Yeah. So we are getting to the holidays. I will not lie. Uh-huh. I was a little slack this week. And up until Thanksgiving, I've been pretty consistent with my working out and, you know, my diet. I'm, like, eating good. I'm not drinking as much. Not to say, like, I'm not drinking. Because I, I still enjoy myself, guys. Like, I still am going to, you know... My, my fitness goals allow me to have that discipline or that lack of discipline where I'm like, you know what? If I yeah. want a cheeseburger this week, yeah. I'm going to do it. Um, but I, I haven't been the best. And, you know, holidays are a special time for me and my family. I don't get to see my, my sisters all the time and my grandparents. So I wasn't going to be hard on myself if I, like, overate and, you know, had to, like, sit mm-hmm. on the couch and unbutton my pants, mm-hmm, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I think of holidays as a time to enjoy yourself. I mean, don't overindulge and yeah. just be like, fuck it. Like, everything's to the wall. Because then you're not going to, like, be able to reach your goals in the following day. But yeah. I did go to the gym the next day. That's good. After Thanksgiving. So I was proud of that. But, you yeah. know, I haven't been my best. But I'm not going to get down on myself mm-hmm. either about that. Uh, I've noticed, like, when people set goals over the years and just following people's fitness journeys and stuff is that, they set goals um, and they make their lifestyle change so drastic that it's almost like that they, they forget that you're going to have the birthday parties. Yeah. If Life you have happens. kids, you're going to have the pizza. And Do you think kids want to eat salad every day? Yeah. Hell no. No. Yeah. And so, you know, the holidays come around and, and it's so important to make the changes in your life that you can truly create that like a healthy lifestyle. Yeah. And know that it's okay to have a slice of the pie or some of the crema's lasagna. I hate (laughs) when people use like, or say food as a reward. They're like, I'm going to treat myself today. I don't think you should look at as food as like a treat. Food isn't the enemy. Yeah. Food is your fuel. Yeah. So, you know, if you're eating good 90% of the time, don't be like, I'm going to treat myself today Mm. to like two rice cakes <laughs> two rice you know like yeah. don't it, it do could be that. pretty it could be pretty i know diet's a huge role but i feel like yes you should have discipline with it mm-hmm. but like don't get you, you down know what on I t- yourself you know what i tell people who are wanting to make a lifestyle change right. and like start what? eating better is i tell them don't even worry about calories yeah. i still to this day i've never counted my calories yeah. never i don't think it's never that and i tell them that Eat as much as you want throughout the course of the day, but just focus on eating healthy. If you right. want like the the any like healthy lean meats, any of the healthy fats, any of like the fruits and the vegetables, um, to not limit yourself, don't restrict your calories coming in necessarily. Yeah. Just focus on making the change of the quality of food that you're eating. Yeah. So my, my biggest problem is snacking. So snacking? I said, yeah, I love snacking. What am I snacking on? Uh, yeah. What am I, I snacking, snacking on? <laughs> Dude, literally, it's, I, that's my biggest problem is snacking. I can eat all the healthy meals, but I'm like, oh, fuck, cheese puffs. Um, cheese puffs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I stopped buying the cheese puffs. I love them, but um, what do you sna- what do you get? Okay, so I got these plantain chips, which you know everyone's like oh, Wait, fuck from you. Trader Joe's. Yes, Trader mm-hmm. Joe's is like my safe haven. Yeah, they have really good um, plantain chips. So these plantain chips, and they have like jerk seasoning on it because you won't like them because they're spicy. spicy. Yeah, yeah, and you hate spice, but they're so fucking good. And I just like I'm like guilt free <laughs> not really but you know just like a small change yeah i'm still gonna snack like uh-huh. i'm still gonna snack if i can maybe you know switch out the lace potato chip for a plantain chip cool and yeah. if i can maybe like have celery and you know balsamic vinaigrette or carrots and shit whatever yeah, like it's better it's way better it's Adding. just little things mm-hmm. i didn't change my lifestyle yeah and i think people's goals um or people's like lifestyle changes. It all depends on the goals that they have set. Mm -hmm. Like your lifestyle and the regimen that you are on is not going to be the same as somebody training for the CrossFit games. Yeah. It's going to be a lot different, which leads into, you know, our special guest that we had today. So Ashley kind of like leaked earlier this morning. If you guessed right. So today our guest is Matt Frazier. I'm really excited to have him. Yeah. He's really, really, he's insane. Yeah. He's, Mm -hmm. yeah. So Matt Frazier. So we're going to learn about 
Matt. Yeah. How his lifestyle. Yeah. He's five time fittest man yeah. champion. So that's like the title you get and when you're the, the two CrossFit years champ. before that he got second. Yes. And the two years and it wasn't good enough. Yeah. So he kept, he made, you know, like, I guess more strict lifestyle changes. Right. And it put him into a uh, first winning. place position. Yeah. yeah. He's a cool, years. cool story. Do you he's, think that he's going to compete in 2021? I want we'll I want I I'm, I'm gonna sure he you're going to ask him. I think he will. I mean, I mean probably like right now he's like I don't want to yeah, you know, I'm done. Like I want to so break. So this is the off season like, for like CrossFit stars. You get you get that you get that bug. You're like I got to compete again. Yeah. Like, I know how it is. I, I yeah. Is. I mean, you've done it, Have you ever done like a a I've challenge done, game like that like Yeah, I've cross- done CrossFit. Uh, competitors like small locally ones, yeah. local ones, nothing, <laughs> nothing Not the to cross that me. level. No, I've thought about it. I've wanted to. I just, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm Maybe a sure. goal for 2021. Yeah, I'd be in, in like the masters light. group. No, that's the other <laughs> I'm not competing to be in the masters group. I don't think I'd be, I think I'd be in the masters. CrossFit is I'd insane. I've always it's always scared me a little bit, yeah. but like I maybe that'll be Lena well, Del Rey's 2021. My new goal is we go. oh. this is my new goal. Uh-huh. Besides my latte art and my leaves, um, I want to be able to do snatches, okay, and jerk and jerk and pull, right? Clean, clean, clean and jerk, jerk clean and jerk. Uh-huh. Sorry jerk and pull that sounds dirty <laughs> sorry <laughs> this is explicit <laughs> um <laughs> so i want to get into crossfit i think crossfit's cool it's always something new mm-hmm. it's not the same consistent workout and i need that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so i'm That's really cool. excited yeah. tune in and like get some advice maybe from matt yeah for sure for sure so um we just want to bring matt on here we're really excited to have him as our guest today and yeah let's get right to it let's matt. get it Welcome to the Reborn Podcast, Matt. I'm really excited to have you on today as one of our guests. Um, it is certainly a pleasure to meet with you, and I appreciate your time coming on today to talk. Uh, I want to talk about how you've overcome adversity, um, what everything like from your daily uh, routine. Are you in the off season right now? Yes, I'm. I'm in the the heart of the off season. I haven't stepped foot in the gym. Uh, basically since, since the games and, uh, you know, diet is right out the window, sleep schedule is right out the window. I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm living like a 14 year old that's unattended. (laughs) So (laughs) those of you who are just now tuning in and you're listening to our podcast with Matt, he has won and he has held his title for the CrossFit fittest man on earth for the last five years. In fact, two years before that, you placed second. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah I, that- I had back to back, back to back second place finishes, um, and then and then the last five years have been five consecutive wins. That's incredible. So Absolutely incredible. Let's go back to kind of like the beginning of Matt before you started in the CrossFit Games. I know you were studying, you were going to school to be an engineer, or you were finishing out that degree and. What was it that wanted that kind of pushed you to want to learn more about the games and the people competing? What was that switch like? Um, I mean, I kind of the start of it, I just kind of fell into it. You know, there wasn't um, it was like, you know, early on, like as soon as I stepped foot in a CrossFit gym that I was, OK, this is my goal. You know, it kind of built naturally. Um, you know, I just started started showing up to CrossFit um, because I was getting chubby. You know, I was just kind of gaining some weight and I was like, it's either I got to start exercising or change my diet and not change my diet. So just started working out. Really quick. um, What was your athletic background before that, before you started getting into CrossFit? Um, I know you're, both of your parents were ice skaters. Is that correct? Yep. Yep. Both my parents. Yeah. My parents were uh, pairs figure skating uh, in the 76 Olympics. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, so my, my sport growing up was actually Olympic weightlifting. So I did, I competed in Olympic weightlifting for about 10 years. Out of high school, I got scouted to live and train at the Olympic Training Center. I lived there for two years. Uh, lived at the Olympic Education Center for two years. And then, you know, once I saw the writing on the wall of like, all right, you know, the Olympic dream isn't getting fulfilled. Um, you know, I just rode it until the wheels fell off until I kind of hated the sport and 
I was able to walk away without still trying to like, ah, you know, maybe I can make a comeback. Maybe I can, you know, make a team here or there. It was, I competed until I wanted nothing to do with it. And I walked away, uh, worked a really, really shitty manual labor job for a summer. And that's what was like, okay, I need to get an education because I don't want to be doing this the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I went to University of Vermont for mechanical engineering, ended up getting a second degree in business. And in in the first couple months there is, you know, I went from training two, three times a day, super strict diet, like my day revolved around my workouts. Um, there was just this huge void in my day. And so I just started showing up to a CrossFit gym because they have all the all the weights, the bars, the facility to do Olympic weightlifting. Um and I had no interest in doing CrossFit. You know, I see everyone, loud music, everyone's just running around. <laughs> Looks like chaos if you don't know what's happening. Um, <laughs> and so I would just kind of sit in the back corner with my barbell, do my Olympic weightlifting workout, and then get out of there. Um, did you have any o- background in gymnastics? You know, I did gymnastics when I was really young, but okay. it was almost more. Did you remember like, it? Nah, it, it really? was more of like like at the age where it's more like, I don't know, like tumbling class. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind <laughs> Your of like mom just day- wanted to keep you busy. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of half daycare and half like get the <laughs> yeah. energy out before yeah. you come home. But, um, you know, I had like trampolines growing up and a stay at home dad that just was like, Hey, I'll give you a dollar if you try a backflip. And it's like, okay, <laughs> you know, and you do it. And so I always had great body coordination. Um, and then pair that with, you know, having the great technique from Olympic weightlifting. So when I started out, I was one of, you know, less than there is now people with good technique and knew how to move the bar efficiently. Right. So like when I started the sport, you know, there's, uh, the two lifts in Olympic weightlifting, the snatch and the clean and jerk, you know, there's one, maybe two guys clean and jerk and 365 pounds. And so I came into it as a rookie with those lifts. Um, so it was just like, like I hit the ground running. Um, and so I definitely got some instant gratification from that and that kind of coerced me to all right let's see let's get better at other things so you're more well-rounded um yeah so whenever you decided like what what was it or when did you decide like yeah I'm gonna go all in here I'm gonna start training for the games like did you think I mean even second place and I know that they're they're like that wasn't good enough for you. Like getting second place and then getting second place the second time, I think it probably ate you up a little bit. So, but, so the first year, the yep. first year that I got second place, you know, I went in and I had no idea what the games were really. You know, like I knew enough, but I didn't know how to prepare for them. I didn't know how to train for them properly. I didn't know what went into it while you were there. You know, you're doing 15 workouts over three or four days. Um, it's your different body every year, right? For the games, yeah. every year they like yeah, make so it a surprise pretty much for the athletes. Some days it's, or some years it's three days, some years it's five days. Sometimes you have a day off in there. Like it so changes you really every year. you don't know what you're getting into until you arrive at that center. Yeah. And, and in training, you can put in the volume, but it's hard to replicate that intensity and that volume and, uh, and the variation that you're going to get. Cause you know, like they'll bust you to different sites. You'll within the same couple hours, you'll be, doing an ocean swim into, you know, like a max barbell movement. So it's really hard to know what you're getting into until you've been there. So the first year when I got second place, you know, I'm through the roof. Um, you know, I just got like the biggest paycheck of my life. Um, and I'm like, Oh my God, I had zero expectations coming in. This is awesome. Uh, so, and then did you start training, like you probably dedicated the whole like following, were you still working at this point going into the the next, like your second year of competing in the games? Yep. Yeah. So you had to divide that time. Yeah. I was still in school full time. So the next year I basically kept up, I didn't change anything really. You know, um, I made it a point to try to prove to people around me, like I can out train a bad diet. I can out train a bad sleep schedule because they, people were coming to me and trying to like, Hey, like, let's clean up the diet. Let's get you on a training program, all these things. And, and You're I didn't like, want nah. to, yeah. uh, part of it was probably laziness of, um, you know, I didn't want to dedicate my entire existence to this. Um, and then the other part of it was, well, what if I dedicate everything to it and I don't get the results I want? So it was almost that like sheltering myself of, 
you know, if something bad happens, if something goes wrong, I have an excuse. Um, so going into the 2015 I, game, I, ju- right, I just want to say, yeah, sorry, I don't want to interrupt you, but I think that's really good that you can identify that. I think that's extremely, it, like, a humbling it, it took, for it yourself. Took a while. Yeah, to to know it, it, that it was like it was almost like a safety blanket for you. Like you were yeah. you were almost scared about like, well, what if you went all in and then you still failed? Like yeah. how what that would feel like. And so you almost used that as like I don't want to say like a cop out, but you know, you were like, oh, I'm no, really gonna it was go. hundred percent hundred percent a cop out. Like it mm-hmm. was a safety blanket, it was this reassurance thing. Um, you know, like the performances I were putting putting up if um you know, if someone looked at it from the exterior and saw the big, all right, you know, he's good, but it's not amazing. But then if they see me do that performance and then immediately open up a pint of Ben and Jerry's and start scarfing that down and seeing how casually I'm taking it, then it's like, oh, wow, that's really impressive. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So the whole year, you know, I showed up to the games and just, I, I took it for granted of like, oh, I got this thing in the bag and then I got second place. So exact same results. In 2014, I was through the roof excited about it. In 2015, it like put me into a spiral of like questioning everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, you know, sat down and as dumb as it sounds, you know, a lot of self reflection, you know, just sitting down with a notepad and just putting out my values, putting out like, all right, what do I want my story to be in five years, 10 years, 20 years? Um, like, how do I want to be remembered? How do I want to be seen? And ma- then making the decision like, all right, you know, I finished up my school degree. Um, and then when, like, when the job fair came into town for college, it was like, nope, not going. I'm putting all, all my eggs into this basket. Mm-hmm. And you know, so I'm what young. changed? It's, yeah, what, what changed for you? Um, I mean, diet, a lot, a uh, lot, a- everything, a lot uh, to started, go, even, even from like, because people, a lot of people would be like, got oh, a second place. I mean, that's, that's an amazing feat. You know, how many people try to go, like even try to get to the level of being a games athlete and then for you yeah. to get second place and it still wasn't good enough for you. And you say going from in, in order to go from second place to first place, the amount of changes, can mm-hmm. you talk about those changes that you started implementing? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, one thing you touched on was, you know, I had other games competitors kind of looking at me like, what are you upset about? You got on the podium and, and, you know, from their perspective, they, they, they're looking at like, I've worked my whole career to try to get on the podium. That's their goal is to get on the podium. Um, and I remember talking to one specifically and I was like, who gives a fuck about getting on the podium? Like, I don't care if I'm second place or 10th place. They're the same. You're a loser. Um, I was like, no, I'm training to win. Like, I don't care about just getting a medal. Um, yeah, so yeah, from the 15 season into the 16, I basically told myself like, okay, I'm going to dedicate one year and that one, one season. So it's not even a full year, but every decision I make is going to be towards bettering my performance. Um, and I realized like you make a thousand decisions a day. It doesn't matter how minute this is every decision is going to take you closer to your goal or further away. And I said, I'm not going to sacrifice a fucking inch, nothing. I'm not going to give up anything. And so, you know, it's, I literally gave myself a bedtime, a wake up time, uh, eating consistently, training consistently, warm ups, cool downs. Um, and then even stuff outside the gym of recovery. So, you know, uh, sauna sessions, throughout the week, ice bath sessions, body work. Um, and, and there, there's decisions throughout, throughout the week that is this one decision going to make the difference in my performance of friends ask me, Hey, we're going out for burgers. Do you want to come? And it's like, yeah, having one cheeseburger isn't going to derail my performance. But if I, if I do this 50 times throughout the year, you know, once a week throughout the entire year, 50, 50 nights out, 50, not ideal meals. Yeah, it might it might tip tip the scale in one direction. Mm-hmm. And so, so I, I wanted, just knew. Yeah, I wanted to ask you that. Like, how did you deal? Did you have a lot of outside um, <clears throat> noise or like outside? Like, oh, whenever oh. you were like, did you feel? Did you feel like that? That did anybody tell you that you were being selfish for doing this? And how? Mm. 
I think that's really good. And I think that's important because, I mean, especially we're coming up on the new year and people, the, this is a lot of like, people have a goal and they see this goal, but what happens is they either let other people kind of interfere with that goal and they cave into that. Um, yep. How did you, I think there's, this is like a, t- uh, two questions. Um, did you feel that pressure? I'm assuming that you did. If people kind of telling you that you were being selfish for saying that you were going to mm-hmm. commit and you said that this was your entire life's goal, like you were doing, yeah. you were going all in. And then how did you deal with that? How did you, and, and if somebody's listening and, and they're thinking about making these huge life changes or they're thinking about um, making, like changing their life, and maybe it's not to become a games athlete. Maybe they want to run their first marathon or maybe they want to just start picking up a barbell for the first time, but staying consistent, right? That's a mm-hmm. huge part of what I'm hearing from you is the consistency and the dedication to the craft. What, can you kind of talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm very open about you know, my home life and, you know, my relationship with, with friends and family. Um, and a lot of people take it the wrong way. Um, a lot of people associate being selfish with being a bad person or kind of leaning towards that side. Um, so I think it gets perceived incorrectly when I, when I say it of the last six years of my life, I've been incredibly fucking selfish. Um, you know, my best friend was getting married. And he's having a bachelor party. And it wasn't like out all night in Vegas type thing. It was like they rented a beach house in Cape Cod or something. And like it was, you know, some of them are sleeping on the floor. They're drinking heavy. They're just eating whatever. And I had to tell them, like, sorry, I can't go. Um, and it's a completely selfish decision. You know, hopefully my friend's only getting married once in his life. And I can't be there for the celebration. Um, luckily, the people I had in my life, you know, uh, Sammy, my now fiance, uh, my business manager and one of my best friends, uh, my, my network of friends all understood my goals. And so when I had to kind of tell them like, sorry, can't go, can't be there for this, can't go out to dinner, can't stay out late and catch a movie with you. Um, there was no questions. They, they understood. Um, I'm sure there were, were some people that, um, didn't appreciate my decision-making, um, and didn't see the bigger picture of it. And I'm sure those friendships just kind of dwindled out, but I can't think of any off the top of my head. You know, it's kind of the same thing as like when, when your habits change, your people, places and things change. And it's not a bad thing. You know, there's like, you know, when, when you quit drinking, uh, you know, you're going to lose your drinking buddies. And it's like, well, the one common thing that we had to share isn't a thing in my life anymore. So it kind of falls to the wayside. So I was lucky enough early on that I had a network of people around me that understood my goals and, and they completely enabled it and supported it. So, you know, when Sammy moved in with me, she's doing all the cooking, all the cleaning, all the keeping the house a home. Uh, my business manager is handling all my contracts, all my scheduling, everything. And I'm good at one thing. I'm good at training and then transferring that training into competing. And so I was able to basically clear my life and only focus on that. <clears throat> I'm sure there were some, some people that, you know, they kind of hounded me like, oh, hey, come out, do this, do that. And I'm just like, sorry, I can't. Um, but for the most part, I had a very supportive group around me that allowed me to become this very selfish person. Um, and, and I hope it doesn't get seen as a bad thing. You know, it's with the intent, you know, with Sammy, there's been plenty of times where our life isn't ideal because we can't go on a vacation. We can't go on this cool trip that someone's offering us, but it's with the idea that, you know, we're going to, we're going to put in the work now so that we can have the freedom later. Um, and I remember when she moved in with me, you know, I convinced her to quit her job. Like she had a great career and I'm like, quit that job move to Vermont, live with me and basically help me out. And I was like, give me a couple years, dedicate a couple years to this. And like, I promise you it will pay off. And I mean, we're both laughing now. of like, Oh shit, it did pay off. That worked out. <laughs> so what is a, uh, give us a day of like what your training schedule looks like. Cause I know you're very regimented. 
Mm-hmm. Um, um, so when you're so, in training, yeah, what does yep. that look like? I mean, peak training, it's, uh, you know, up at eight. Uh, and then it's even, so my bedroom is set up to have the most ideal night of sleep. Uh, the windows are like blacked out, blacked out, blackout like tin curtains. foil. <laughs> Uh, I mean, like tin foil over <laughs> over the windows, so no light gets in. Um, room is set to sixty eight degrees because it's where your body wants to be for the best sleep. Uh, I have a dawn simulator, so it wakes you up with light instead of sound, so you wake up less groggy. Um, right off the bat, you know, I used to take like thirty minutes of emails, coffee, you know, chatting with Sammy, but then as soon as I wake up, it's breakfast is on the table. Um, just because the amount of food I I take in when I'm training is just absurd. Uh, But then usually meet at the gym, like 9.30 or so. Um, Before that, you know, it's 30 minutes of massage gun, stretching, warming up. Uh, Usually in the gym from the 9.30 till about 12.30 or 1 of just work out, sit down for 20 minutes. Work out, sit down for 20 minutes. Uh, Constantly eating throughout all that. On my drive home, text Sammy, hey, be home in 10 minutes. Lunch is on the table when I get here. Uh, you know, scarf down lunch. I'll usually put my feet up for like maybe 45 minutes, an hour in between training sessions. But then uh, then it's getting suited up for the next training session. And then the next one's usually another gym session or training at home here. A uh, couple hours of that, finish it. Sammy has dinner on the table for when I get back. Um, in peak training, we'll do three sessions a day. The last one's usually a little less involved. Usually it's just like meeting up with my training partners uh, and doing hill sprints or something like that. But, you know, it's um, something you don't need to think of. You know, there's no pacing. It's just, you're at the bottom of the hill, you're looking at the top and it's like, all right, I got to do this 10 times. Mm-hmm. Sprint up, walk down, sprint up, walk down, come home, text Sammy on the way home. Hey, be there in 10. She has a meal ready. Uh, I get home. Then it's uh, dinner, sauna, sauna session, ice bath, um, and then, you know, put on TV show or movie at night. And then if I'm just laying on the floor, rolling out, stretching, you know, air gunning out. Um, and then usually like an hour, hour of like dedicated, like sit on the couch, do nothing. And then, uh, bed, bed at 10 o'clock and do it all over. Uh, so does, does Sammy work out? She sounds pretty incredible. Yeah, Sam, yeah, Sammy is very incredible. Uh, she fitnesses for fun, as she likes to say. Um, so during, like during peak training, when we're doing two a days, three days, like she'll be in the gym a lot of the time with us. Um, just kind of the bar's a little bit lighter, her paces are a little bit slower. Um, but yeah, I mean, she'll she puts does in she the do hours, CrossFit like, with you too, or does yeah, she? Yeah. Uh, that's what she does. Okay, cool. Yep. Uh, yeah, I mean, she really likes coming to the track with us. Um, so it's usually like I get four laps in for when she does three. So, you know, pass each other every once in a while. But, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, she, she works out a ton for someone that just does it for fun. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we've done a couple um, – like we did one team competition together where we were partners <laughs> over in Switzerland. Um, oh, that's so cool. Yeah, it, it was a lot of fun for me. Um, I don't think she enjoyed it as much <laughs> because she was like everyone's – everyone's looking at me and I remember it was like, I think there was five teams on the floor and nine of the 10 people on the floor were all games athletes. And Sam was like, not only am I not a games athlete, but like, I'm not a regional athlete. Um, I was like, Sammy, we're here for fun. You know, we're just having a good time. But yeah. Do you enjoy the repetition of like your peak training season? Or do you think that, I mean, I know obviously that helps you when you're training for like the games and stuff, but do, it, do you ever have, like, have a moment where you're like, oh, shit, not this again. There's, there's times throughout the year. Um, like th- this year was drastic yeah, um, because, the, because we, we always block out our season of like, all right, we're doing the open, we're doing this competition, this one, and then the games. Um, and so like at the start of the year, for the most part, we know exactly what we're doing in terms of volume and training, what, mm-hmm. um, like what modalities we're hitting, you know, there's certain part of the seasons where we're working a lot more on strength and certain parts where we're working a lot more on our cardio. Um, so, I mean, we know ahead of time what we're doing, um, basically down to the day. 
And, and this year was a little bit different because, you know, whatever our, our ramp up is for the games, usually I'd say probably 12 to 16 weeks, um, a dedicated, um, like camp basically. Uh, and this year, you know, we have our 16 week camp set up and then we're four weeks out and they're like, all right, it's postponed three weeks. And then we're like, Oh shit. All right. So we just go back and it's not enough time to take a week off and hit the reset button, but it's too much time to just continue that same training. So it's a little bit modified. Mm-hmm. And then we get three weeks out again, it's delayed another three weeks. We get three weeks out again, it's delayed three weeks. Um, so this year was rough. You know, our, our games training season this year was like twice Chaotic, as long yeah. as it usually is. But most of the time, um, you know, it's maybe you're two weeks out and you're like, okay, I'm, I'm ready for this to be, to be over. Mm-hmm. But the, you see the light at the end of the tunnel. So that, that gets you through. And you know what's at the other end. You know you get like a month off or two months off um, mm-hmm. to do whatever you want. And that's when you get to spend the time with your family, your friends. You get to travel and do all the shit that you've wanted yeah. to do for the whole year. Um, but I mean, like, like anything, even when you're pursuing a passion, you know, starting up a business of your own, there's going to be days where you're miserable. And there's going to be days where it's like, okay, this is work. And you need to almost like bribe yourself of most days when you go in, it's like, well, I'm here because I love it. This isn't work, you know, because it's Mm -hmm. my passion. Every once in a while, there's those days where you're like, fuck this. Like, but you're like, I have to go in. This is my Mm -hmm. job. If I want to have a living and pursue this, I need to show up to work. How did you overcome the adversity of, of whenever your training schedule changed? Um, from going into 2020 and you had these expectations of like, you thought the games and everything were going to be on time. How did you overcome that? Like, cause I think a lot of it is, it is physical, but a lot of it's kind of like a, a mind game. Oh, I mean, th- this year was more mental than anything. Um, I mean, I, I mean, th- this year in a lot of ways was no different than other years in terms of every year has its obstacles. Every year has its curveballs, its injuries. It's um, like, I mean, even to the point of people going out of their way to try to fuck up your goals. Mm -hmm. Um, Like they have nothing going on in their lives. They have nothing better to do. So like, they're like, I'm going to ruin your day. Um, So, I mean, even stuff like that, it's, you just have to, like I, for me, I have like this, this list of goals uh, of like, how much am I willing to put up with and do for this end result? And so, so there's no decision making throughout the year. Um, it's either it checks the box of like, nope, this is in par with what I was expecting, um, or it's not, and I walk away. And so this year, it, there, there was no no big changes uh, that ever made us think of like, you know, walking away and be like, ah, oh, fuck this, like, it's not worth it. Um, but when, when like something would come out, whether it was, uh, you know, they announce a delay or they announce a venue change or they announce a new format, it's uh, we would get together with our team. And so uh, there's Tia, who is now the four time defending champ uh, on the female side. So her and I train together every day. Her husband is our coach. Um, and so every day it's the three of us in the gym and then you know, Sammy is kind of like the team mom of making sure we have, nice. have our food, our snacks. Um, Sammy does a ton of body work on me when, you know, my back, if I can't reach my back, mm-hmm. that's Sammy doing it. Um, and then we have the same manager and agent. And so it's literally like when these announcements would come out, we would sit down and just do our best to take emotion out of it. You know, emotion rarely gives you the end result that you actually want. Um, and it's just sitting down and looking at the facts of like, okay, what is our best plan of attack? How are we going to approach this to give the most ideal end result possible? Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, it's, we do that on a daily basis when it comes to workouts, when it comes to training, when it comes to these life decisions of sitting down and be like, all right, what is the best approach where like where's this decision going to put me tomorrow next week in a month year all that stuff um but yeah just trying to deal with all these things with zero emotion and then always having the mindset um you know like when something non-ideal comes up just 
having that instant knee jerk reaction of saying good. Um, you know, finding that silver lining in every scenario when there's, there's, there's no fucking silver lining, but it's right. like, all right, you can, you can be miserable about it, but that's mm-hmm. a choice. Mm-hmm. You know, this, this shitty thing is happening to you, whether you find the good in it or you stay miserable, mm-hmm. that's a choice. Um, can you, uh, so, you can, know, d- sorry, does your, does your back ever bother you still? I know that you said Sammy works on your back a little bit, but I know you had a, you broke your back, right? Did yeah, you yeah, back? yeah. I broke my L5 in two spots. When, um, how long ago was that? I mean, I was 19 when that happened. Was it doing um, was weightlifting? Still Olympic, yeah. Wow. wow. Um, yeah, so I have two two plates and a couple bolts in there now holding it. Or it did hold it together. It's, it's healed, and the doctor told me, like, yeah, if it bothers you, we can go in and take out the hardware. But if it doesn't <laughs> bother you, then we'll just leave it. Um, very rarely will it flare up, and anytime it does, it's the type of thing. Like, I look back at the training I did the, the day before, and I'm like, oh, of course it should be flared up, you know? Um, so whether that's from the hardware in there or just from my training, I don't know. There, there's a lot of variables that go into it, but for the most part, it doesn't bug me. Um, Did that ever come into play like a mental game for yourself, like thinking that, you know, I mean, no, to, I break mean your, to break your back is like, that's like a pretty... Severe injury. Ma- yeah. Yeah, there's, there's some points where like, it crossed my mind of like, oh shit, did I re-break it? You know, like if I, it's just sore the way it used to be sore. Um, but I mean, like we, we have to deal with little tweaks and injuries. Um, you know, the last couple of years, I've put a lot more time and effort into like body work, uh, being proactive with it instead of when I was younger, it was just when something started to hurt, that's when I would address it. Like when my ass was on fire, that's when I would go find body work and start doing, um, like rehab for it. Whereas now it's a part of my day so that those injuries don't come up at all. Um, and so, you know, we've gone to extreme lengths of like, we found a body work guy that in, in my opinion is one of the best in the world. And, uh, he lives in Boston. I live in Tennessee. So it's like, all right, how do we, well, how do we story. get appointments with this guy? And it was, uh, every 10 days we'd fly him in and he would stay at our house for three days um, I would do three sessions a day with them. And, uh, you know, so it's these things that I'm like, fuck, I don't know if this is going to pay off. Who is it? Who is but, it in Boston? Um, can you say his name? So, yeah. So I originally started meeting with a guy, his name is Alex Guerrero. Um, and he, he is a Tom Brady, Tom Brady's body work guy. He does like, he basically lives with Tom, um, works on him three times a day. And anytime you see an interview or Tom Brady on the sidelines or in public, it's like a find Waldo game of like, where's Alex? And he's <laughs> always, he's, he's at Tom's side. So he's in all day, right every now. day. So if, if you ever wonder why Tom, how Tom is able to play at 43 years old, it's this guy. Uh, he's so good at what he does. The like secret he, Tom, now. He, ha- he has, he has <laughs> the magic hands. It, it's so like earlier this season, I had an injury that, um, I didn't know what it was. Um, you know, one doctor is telling me it's a broken rib. One's telling me it's a dislocated rib. Like all the, I'm getting different diagnoses all over. And, uh, I finally get with one guy and he's giving me like TRP injections. And he's telling me it's like a eight mm-hmm. to 12 week, week recovery. And I'm like, oh, I got a competition in six weeks. I need fixed. And, uh, I talked to Alex and you know, I'm in desperation mode. I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm in trouble. Like I'm thinking my season's over, if not my career. And he was like, he was like, ah, I, I would help you, but I'm in Tampa with Tommy. And I'm like, all right, what if I get to Tampa? And he's like, I'm with Tommy until three, I'll work with you. And so like we were in Tampa the next morning and, uh, wow. you know, I'm, I've gone like months at this point where I couldn't touch a barbell, not like nothing over 135. And my first day with him, uh, he, he works on me for an hour. Um, and then he's like, all right, we're going to go to the gym. I want you to max out your back squat. And I'm like, excuse me. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I haven't lifted over 135. Like I can barely get out of bed. And he's like, no, like I fixed you. You're good. I want you to max out. And so I did. And I was like, oh, wow. And it was at that moment. I was like, oh, this is how Tom is playing at 43 years old. Of, like, <laughs> this is why his body is in such good shape is he has this guy with him full time. So he actually has a company called TB12, and uh, 
and he trains body work people to work on people the way he does. And uh, so I, I started working with that company um, and they flew down one of their body work people that does CrossFit. So he's familiar with what I do. He's familiar with what I'm preparing for. And he would fly down every 10 days and he would stay with us, stay in our house for three days. Sammy would cook for him. Um, and he would work on me three times a day and help get me through the season. Uh, so yeah, you know, it's kind of doing stuff like that to make sure that the injuries we're, we're doing what we can to prevent the injuries yeah. instead of treating, treating them once they come up. So you've been five times champion. Are you excited for, well, I know you're enjoying your time off now. Are you getting ready or are you thinking about, all right, what's 2021 going to bring for me? This is a, this is a big question, Matt. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it was funny and, you know, it got, it got blown up after the games when, when people, people are asking, you know, all right, what, what's, what's, what's next, Matt? Matt? Yeah. And, and I remember like doing the interview after the games and it's, to me, it's so annoying. I'm like, motherfucker. Like, I just finished this season. <laughs> right. 40, Let me enjoy 40 it. Minutes ago. Jesus. That is like, we're still within the same hour. There's still yeah. people competing and you're already asking me what's next. Um, and for probably the last three or four years, um, I've made no dedication to anything. Um, you know, we going into the games, that's all I'm thinking about. That's all I'm focused on. So when the question comes up of like, you know, what, what, what are you doing next season? I'm like, no, like this season isn't over yet. Yeah. I'm not even, I'm not even entertaining the idea of what's coming next season. Um, and so then this year when the game's finished and someone asked like, all right, like what's 2021 bringing? And I made a comment of like, nope, no idea. You know, <laughs> Sam, Sam and I are going to take a month or two. We're going to travel. Yeah. We're going to do our thing and we're going to have some life talks. Um, and everyone starts speculating on that of like, you know, are we planning on starting a family? Are we moving right. all this stuff? And I was like, guys, we, we do this every year. I say this every year of, you know, we'll take a week immediately after the games at, at my camp and it's just drinking coffee, sitting on a dock. Nice. And sometimes that sitting on the dock where we don't say a word for three hours. And then other times it comes up like, all right, what do we, what's our goal for the next week? What's our goal for the next month? Uh, where do we want to be in five years, 10 years? And we get into these deep life talks of, all right, like we have our goal of where we want to be in 10 years. What's our annual breakdown? What's our monthly breakdown? What, what can we accomplish today to, to put us in the right position and make that goal in 10 years? Um, and so, you know, we still haven't, haven't sat down and had uh, the talks of, all right, we know where we want to be in five years, 10 years, but what can we do today to make that happen? So we're just kind of enjoying, enjoying the time. moment, yeah. I mean, especially with this season being so long. Um, you know, usually A well deserved I'm, break. I'm back to training. I'm back to training at this point because the games were three months ago, but the games are only one month ago. Uh, so we're, we're still doing all the traveling and stuff that yeah. we've had to put off um, for a long time. And the travel, the travel now looks different than it has in the past because we don't want to get on an airplane or it's frowned upon to get on an airplane. So we're just getting in the truck and yeah. like we, we drove 15 hours yesterday because we were up seeing Sammy's family in New England. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're still trying to figure out what, what this next year brings because we have no idea. Yeah. I, I love how you emphasize on how much, it is that you do that as a team, that it's not just you, that you have recognized that it is you, but it is your, your team, that everything that Sammy does. And I think that's, you know, you become the sum of the people that you surround yourself with. And 100%. you've, you've hit on that many times and you've had to let go of people who, um, maybe either they didn't support you or they were, um, uh, you know, pressuring you to do things and you're like, no, I can't, but your core group and the people that you have, I think that it's so important that, and how you've kind of painted this picture that it's not just you, you are able to be who you are today and you have been able to accomplish the things that you have been able to accomplish because of the people that you have placed in your life. hundred percent. I mean, uh, I mean like, like our, our group, like we refer to ourselves as team uh, like, you know, in the group chats, K team, like when are, when is everyone booking their flights together with this competition? Where, where's our team staying? Um, you know, like when 
Sam and I first started dating, it was like, I, I basically asked her to quit her job. You know, she had a great, like a career type job, you know, like it wasn't just like an hourly punch in the clocks and checking your schedule every week to see what you get. Like it was a great career. And, um, do, you know, do you think, do you think that she ever, uh, you know, like dealing with everything that you have, do you think she was ever like, Oh my God, what did I get myself <laughs> into? Sammy, did, did you ever question the choices we made? No, she's laughing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And you know, it, yeah, I mean, you, I don't think people realize the significance of these 1% changes. Um, you know, like my manager and agent, Matt O'Keefe, uh, he's dealing with all my contracts. He's dealing with all my sponsors when they want to book travel for me or they want something posted or even contract negotiations. If I'm concerning myself with that, you know, I'm taking an hour a day during a contract negotiation. That's an hour that I'm not doing mobility. That's an hour that I'm not getting sleep. That's an hour that I'm not focusing on my diet. Um, and then on top of that, it's what you bring into the gym with you of the stress. This, it's always in the back of your mind. It's the stress. If you walk into the gym and you're not, and you don't have a smile on your face, well, you're probably, you're probably less likely to put in that 100% effort. Um, your training's not going to be perfectly ideal. You know, in the middle of working, instead of focusing on your breathing, you're going to be focusing on like, man, I can't believe that's what they sent back for the contract. That's bullshit. You know, that's not what we discussed. You're, you're, you're already in this bad mood. Um, so now compound that over like how many contracts come in per year, a fucking lot. Um, and so, you know, having that network around you and then also having like-minded people, you know, like, Oh, Keith can't, can't keep up with me in training. Sammy doesn't keep up with me in training. Um, but then having Tia in the gym. And so she's like-minded, she's doing all the same thing. So it's just reinforcing all these great habits. Um, you know, this type of dedication can seem strange if the other people aren't doing it, but it's kind of like the same as being an entrepreneur. If, if four of your friends are entrepreneurs and have gone through the process, your barrier to entry is so much lower. Mm -hmm. And so with us, you know, Shane is writing our programming. So I'm able to have these discussions with him on a daily basis of like, I want to start working on this. Why are we doing this? Going into this workout, what is the purpose of it? You know, you can work, you can work hard all day long, but if you're just banging your head against the wall, you're not going to get the progressions that you're hoping for. Right. So going into every single training session, every single recovery session, um, knowing the purpose behind it um, is just an absolute game changer. Um, and so, you know, I have the five people in my life, like we're a group of five that there's no questions on why are we doing what we're doing? It's, it's very clear cut. It makes the decisions easy and you're surrounding yourself with like-minded people that you don't need to explain yourself to. Uh, it makes the training a lot. It's not easy, but it's very fucking simple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you so, and Tia close? Uh, sorry, Ashley, didn't mean that. No, are you guys close like during off season too? Like you guys go and like do vacations? Or are you sick of um, each other? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I mean, immediately after the competition, you go, I think we spent like a day or two together. Um, you know, we all went back to a house and it was just like, you know, everyone's just hanging out in their, in their sweatpants. We have bonfire going nice. and it's just like, we're all hanging out. Um, I mean, I don't want to speak for it, but like, like we are like siblings. Um, you know, it's the type of thing where it's like, we are at each other's throat. Um, but we know that like, okay, this isn't it's just, it's just a very surface level so argument. Um, and I mean, it's funny too, of like, we will leave a training session, like just upset at each other, but then like, we'll hear someone else pick on us. Like if, if I hear someone else say something about Tia and I'm like, no, 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 I get to say <laughs> that about her, not you. And vice versa, you know, uh, I mean, the best way to describe it is we're siblings. There's yeah. no way around it. We bicker like siblings. Um, you know, we give each other a hard time like siblings, but then at the same time, it's like, I've never had a training partner like that. I've never seen, I mean, over the last four or five years, I've almost exclusively trained with females and I've never had a like-minded, a like-minded training partner like this. Um, I've had great training partners, uh, still love them to this day, but Tia is just a different breed of, uh, of human. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's really refreshing and reassuring that like, oh, okay, I'm not, I'm not the only one doing this. Yeah. <laughs> 
I imagine. So I have a, a question um, for you and just kind of like closing out the podcast. Um, if there are younger aspiring game athletes, and I, I feel like this is a question you might get often, so I'm sorry if mm-hmm. it's redundant. Um, but if somebody's listening to this podcast and their goal is to one day be a games athlete, mm-hmm. what are three things that you could tell them that they need to have, that they need to work towards? Uh, so I think number one is uh, make sure you love it. Make sure you have fun doing it. Make sure you enjoy the suffering. Um, you know, it, I mean, it applies to any field. Like, I'm sure when, when you were starting your company, there's going to be nights where you're like, fuck, I want to go to bed. But you don't mind staying up until two in the morning on the business side of things because you're like, I love this shit. Mm -hmm. Um, So, I mean, like we do, I mean, the best example is just like rowing intervals, bike intervals, track intervals, where it's hard to explain the feeling that you're getting of your lungs bleeding. Like you're, you taste pennies while you're working out because it's like your lungs are bleeding. Um, And you're like, good. I fucking love this. Um, So, make sure you love it. Make sure you're not doing it to impress someone else. Make sure you're not doing it because you said that you wanted to do it a year ago and now you're, I don't know, too embarrassed to go back on your word. Make sure there is a underlying passion that even if you're not getting paid a dollar, you are still going to do it. Um, and then I think the other thing is just like lay down the foundation Um, you know, I've, I realized that early on with school that like, if you don't lay down that first foundation base knowledge technique, whatever it is, trying to build off it instead of, instead of building this pyramid where you have this great foundation and you're building blocks up, you're building a skyscraper and your, your foundation is small and you're trying to stack blocks just in a tower. It's going to tip. Uh, at some point, you know, you're going to get injured. You're not going to see the progressions that you want to be seeing. Um, you know, like when I did my engineering degree, uh, I made that mistake. You know, I kind of brushed off like calculus, you know, the first math class you take. And it's like, I don't care about learning it enough to carry it on. I just want to learn it enough to get through this class. Well, then you're fucked when you get to calculus two, calculus three, differential equations, linear algebra. It's like, you don't have the building blocks. And so like at one point I literally went back and redid my calculus. You know, I'm in Calc 3, and I'm retaking Calc 1 to get the foundation building blocks. And I see it every day with with people in training. Uh, You know, something as simple as the Olympic lifts. They are highly, highly technical lifts. There's no room for error. And and it's almost a guarantee that day one going into the gym, from what your coach should be allowing you to do in terms of technique and the weight that you're lifting, you can get the instant gratification of just loading up the weight on the bar and ripping it and do better. Um, Do better in the sense of you have more weight on the bar. So it's always saying no to that instant gratification. Um, If you don't get that proper snatch technique, the proper clean technique on day one, your career is fucked. The, The amount of building blocks you can stack on top of that is so little. You know, I look at me competing at the games. Most year at the games, I would say I'm stronger than 10 of the competitors. Um, but then the other 30 are way, way stronger than me. Most years of the games, there's one, maybe two that outlift me. And it's because I know how to use my strength efficiently. So all of my strength is getting translated into these lifts, where all these other guys... Yeah, if they take if they take a hundred attempts at a lift, they might land at once, um, but their technique isn't there, so they're not efficient with it. You know, they're having missed attempts that's causing costing them valuable seconds on the competition floor. So, you know, in terms of gratification down the road, uh, and in terms of like body preservation of having longevity in your career, that technique and foundation is one hundred percent essential. Like you can't get away from it. So. Put in the time. It's not sexy. It's not gratifying when you're doing it. Uh, you're watching all your friends load up heavier bars and like hoot and holler and slapping each other on the ass of, you know, getting these big lists. But uh, it will pay 
huge, huge dividends later on to learn how to do it correctly right from the start. Mm-hmm. What is your favorite lift, uh, favorite. snatch and, or clean and jerk? Uh, I've, I've always enjoyed snatching more um, because I, I, was, I never had the strength to back up. Um, you know, my, I always relied on speed, technique, and flexibility. Um, so I, I could always out, out snatch my peers. Um, so I think, you know, it just kind of comes with the territory. It's pretty rare that you enjoy something you're not good at. And I was always better at snatching. So I think it just kind of paid, it just kind of compounded of, I was better at it. So I enjoyed it more and I worked on it more and that made me even better at it. So, um, I have, I have brought up my clean and jerk quite a bit in the last couple of years, uh, just with putting on, putting on weight. But, uh, yeah, I've always, I've always felt I've had an advantage when it came to snatching. Mm-hmm. That's good. Uh, do you have anything else that you want to include, like for the listeners or anybody who's listening? Anything else? Any, yeah, we, what's, your, covered, what's your go-to quote? What's your go-to quote? Do you have like a mantra? Oh, fuck, a mantra? I see. I mean, read, I, what's, I, what's behind <laughs> you? Read your, uh, uh, a, I keep seeing it. <laughs> Ron, Ron Swanson. Uh, yeah, don't half ass two things, whole ass one thing. I like that. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, I mean, it depends what aspect of uh, of my life you're looking at. You know, when it when it comes to working, I think it was the Jerry Rice quote: uh, "I'll do today what others aren't willing to, so I can do tomorrow what other people can't." Um, you know, Muhammad Ali, like suffer now, live the rest of your life as a champion. Um, I think I think the one that applies more to just day to day is, you know, success is the best revenge. Um, I've looked at that, especially in the last two or three years of people going out of their way to try to derail my career or just, you know, put blocks in the way to make it a little bit harder. Um, you know, I don't, I don't have an emotional retaliation to it. I don't, I try not to bring my emotion into it at all, but just, I just, I use that as a motivation to work on myself, make myself better. Um, you know, make them in five years talk about the time that they used to know you. Um, You know, my revenge to you is that I'm going to, I'm going to better myself. I'm not going to go out and like slash your tires. I'm not going to treat you the way you treated me. My success is I'm going to make myself so much better that, that you hate it. Um, I love that. But I've always liked that one. Yeah, I really like that one. And I think that applies for everything. It's beyond fitness. It could go into business. It can go into like your personal life. And, you know, there's always going to be people out there. So the sex beats. Yeah. You know, even like when it comes to a relationship of like, if you get dumped and it's because this person was like, I didn't like this quality about you. And so they break up with you and it breaks your heart. Well, in the moment it's like, all right, well my revenge to you, like, I'm not going to go out and hurt you, but I'm going to better myself. And if that was a bad trait that I was carrying, I'm going to fix it. And that's my way of getting back of making myself better. Um, So, you know, it's, you know, you hear people say like, oh, well, that's just carrying around resentment. And it's like, well, no, like these aren't external. I'm going to try to better myself uh, mm-hmm. to better the situation. I love that. Well, thank you so much, yes, Matt, thank you, for Matt. coming on. Yeah, you're really inspiring. Yeah, thank you guys for It was an me. honor. Seriously, it was an honor talking to you. Thank you, guys. All right, guys, mm-hmm. it's best time of the day, best time of the podcast. It's question time. So we just had like a nice long interview with Matt. And yeah, that was really good. Yeah. He I'm was a really down to Yeah. He a cool guy. So we're going to kind of keep today's question short, sweet, simple. Um, and we're going to go on with the theme of Thanksgiving. Because <laughs> oh, who doesn't love Thanksgiving and food? <laughs> so first off, uh, what is your favorite thing? Thanksgiving meal. What's my, your like your favorite? Uh, mashed potatoes and gravy. Okay. <laughs> my turkey that I put on there is like this much, and it's like mainly a plate of mashed potatoes. Well, it's <laughs> classic. I love a river and of gravy. gravy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, if you follow Ashley on her regular Instagram, she, uh, you know, she has her Traeger grill that mm-hmm. she uses quite often. I cooked and, everything uh, in that. You, you cooked your turkey mm-hmm. on the Traeger. I did. Yeah. How was it? What was that process like? It was good. Um, it was good. That was a great answer. <laughs> <laughs> it was really good, guys. It was good. Okay. So here's the real story, the real truth about the turkey. Um, so like I said, I actually worked pretty much the majority of the day. Blue and I worked the majority of the day at American Brew. And we got here early. We started doing a lot of um, 
I don't know if you call it like grunt work, but just like kind of hard, hard work. Um, we did the grease trap. We were lacquering the tables. Um, what else? I don't know. We were we were here for a good bit. You were decorating for oh, Christmas. We were cleaning out the, yeah, we were cleaning out the closets. Um, and so we, st- I was like, hey, would you like a coffee whiskey drink? And Blue was like, yeah, of course I'll have a coffee whiskey drink. So one, one coffee led to another. drink led to another, <laughs> which led to another. And... Um, anyways, we, we kind of honestly forgot about the turkey. It was set. <laughs> so with the Traeger, we have an app on our phone that you can actually control the turkey and how long it's cooking. And if, if you're like wanting the recipe for the turkey, we got it off of the Traeger app and it was just, Oh, it comes with recipes. And yeah. Stuff. So on the app, there's like recipes that you can do. Um, but it was just butter and, uh, oh, a lot of butter, a lot of butter, a lot of butter. And then one of the Traeger spices or seasonings and we just melted the butter and then we just like it Rather actually should, up. yeah it should have been done the night before but like I said we've been so freaking busy like just no breaks the past two weeks that all of a sudden it was like Thanksgiving day and we're like oh shit the turkey and like we were trying you know he was having the boys pull out the innards of the turkey and oh the boys gosh. were like basting it anyway so we put the trigger on smoke and it took like six hours to smoke it and we forgot about the turkey and then all of a sudden we're like oh my gosh the turkey and we like closed up American Brew <laughs> and uh, yeah and then we went home and we pulled it out and I mean it was a good looking turkey and it did look really I just good decided, I was like oh this is this is another Traeger meal. You know, and I try to uh, record anytime. it. Yeah, and I don't, I, I literally use a Traeger almost every single day. And I'm like, oh, I got it. I like want to share like what I'm cooking because I, up until the, I've had the Traeger, I've never been a big cook at the house. Like I've never been good. You I, use it all the I time. Do, you I, got it so when easy. I first started working here. And yeah. I've, you've always talked about it how is, great you like. It, 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 I love the Traeger girl because of the simplicity. Mm-hmm. It is so easy to use. And this is not an ad, by the way. Yeah, this is not be. an ad. This is just an honest review. Yeah, yeah. And I, I was kind of like, I, I got the Traeger and I was a little bit nervous. I was like, you know what? It'll be for Blue. He does a lot of the cooking when he's here. I'm like, he's going to love it. And then, of course, he was gone for a really long time. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to fire this bad boy up, see what I can do. And yeah, I've, I've cooked cookies in there. I've done pizzas. Um, and then we did we did our first Thanksgiving turkey, turkey in there. Were you like and stabbing it? In dude, your video? I was. So there's this video, you guys, on my Instagram. Of uh, <laughs> I literally have this like I don't even know what it is because I don't know. We'll put a lot it about. on the podcast videos. It's like <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm a. Uh, it's like this hook. I think it's to hook meats or whatever. I, I don't know. It's like a little hook curly in. And I was literally sitting there, right? <laughs> and we we went home. I made myself and Blue more whiskey drinks, cocktails. It's what you do on you know, it's, you know, whatever. We were just enjoying ourselves while we were. We smelled disgusting, and I was like, "Oh, our turkey!" And then so I was like, "Ah!" I was like, "Hey, Blue!" I was like, "Look, like take the phone." I was like, "You got to get a picture <laughs> of me like cooking the turkey." <laughs> I didn't know he was filming. <laughs> and so I started taking this, like, the long wand with the hook, and I started just, like... Whipping the turkey. Whipping, <laughs> whipping the turkey. Like, kind of violently, I guess. And then I think on the video, it just shows me doing it, like, yeah, three times. All- but <laughs> the real video... I did it so, so many times that Blue had to be like, Ashley, that's enough. <laughs> like, stop. You're taking some shit out on that turkey. I did. And I was literally just like... Anyways... That is, I hope you can understand through my laughter, but, uh, <laughs> that is the real story of the turkey. And yes, I did cook it in the Traeger. Actually, so you didn't the credit cheat. goes to blue. No, you no, I was surprised. In the oven. Yeah. I was surprised that people were like, Oh, like, did you, you, did you really put that in the oven? I mean, it just looked too good to be true. Yeah. It looked amazing. But I, but my opinion though, like. The things that we have cooked, like cookies, anything that would normally go in the oven, we've actually put them in the Traeger grill, and they look and they taste so much better than what an oven is. Like really? we have not even used the oven since we've gotten the Traeger. Damn, you can cook anything in the Traeger. All right, word. I'm so, gonna have to come over and yeah, test that. Theory. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Make Christmas has, cookies. I know, dude. They're so good. I don't know what it is. That's the thing. Is like I don't know what it is, like about the Traeger that makes the food so good, but. Um, yeah, it was good. And I like I don't even pay attention to the there's so much you can learn about the Traeger, like the different pellets and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I just throw whatever pellets in there and cook away. That's easy. <laughs> the That's easy. Yeah, and it has an alarm on my phone, so when it's done cooking, it just like beeps you. Will this you do another awesome. one on Christmas? I actually want to do a ham. So the turkey looked good. I felt like and I didn't want to like hurt Blue's feelings, but I was like, 
I thought it tasted kind of dry, or it could, it could have been the whiskey that I had. <laughs> I just <laughs> got dry mouth from the whiskey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I, I want to try a ham. You're gonna try a ham? Mm-hmm. Do you do pineapple on the ham? No, I don't like pineapple on the ham. What? I like I'll do pineapple on my pizza. Thank you for saying that. Thank you for being brave and saying that pineapple does belong on pizza. Pineapple belongs on pizza. It absolutely. Pineapple does. and ham. <laughs> and what else goes on? Not olives. It's like a Hawaiian pizza. Yeah, Hawaiian is great. It's ham and pineapple. I do. I do olives on my pizza. We can't talk really? anymore. Oh my gosh! I really? Hate olives. You yeah. do? Just in general? Yeah. What about in your martini? That'll do it because it has alcohol in it, and I'm always down for alcohol. But would you eat? Hell no! No, it's just, just a like garnish. Olives. It's just a garnish. I like all juice because it's salty. Yeah, but that's it. Yeah. I and don't we know. are it's drinking so um, our espresso martini. Yeah, this is the white chocolate one. Yeah, it's Godiva with Godiva white chocolate liquor espresso. Liqueur, yeah. And yeah. uh, something else. Yeah, this is one of our special holiday drinks. But if you're here locally in Virginia Beach, we have a lot of new cocktails that have just came out for the holiday. And then we're putting up all of our Christmas decorations. We got to do the lights around mm-hmm. American Brew. And I'm like big on Christmas decorations. And yeah. Drop off your letters to Santa here. Yeah. We have a mailbox. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's all good stuff. And but that is it. Yeah. Very so, excited for the holidays here. Yes. Yeah, it's a good festive place. So. What do you, do you have any like 20, besides Olympic lifting, 2021 goals? 2021 is, you know, get your shit together. This is my year. I'm a, 2020 was my year of trying to get my shit together. 2021 is going to be the year I actually fully commit to myself and living a healthy lifestyle, being more organized. Being more selfish. I like uh, yeah. Matt talked like about. Matt There's said, nothing wrong with he, that. There's nothing wrong with being selfish. You know, I... I want to take the time to actually better myself and do things more so for myself than anyone else because I feel like that's something I've struggled with. I do love helping others, and I will not stop that. Um, but I want to take time for myself and really commit to being my best version yeah. of myself. Yeah, that's what about important. you? That's important. Ooh, um, I'm there are a lot of things going on in 2021. Yeah, but fitness-wise, I I feel like the past um, – definitely the past couple years, I've I've – given up a lot of my fitness endeavors to run business Mm -hmm. and I've, I've focused a lot on endurance training and we were lifting a lot of heavy things, um, this week, like moving stuff out of the gym and just stuff around the house. And I have realized how much of my strength that I have lost. Mm -hmm. And I know that I probably still look strong. Like I, I hold muscle pretty well. Um, but I feel really weak. And so I cannot wait. I don't want to do, and I say that, I know I just finished with my 40 hour run, like probably two weeks weeks ago, ago, two, two and a half. It'll be three weeks ago this this week. And, um, you know, I took the time off. I took two weeks off to like fully recover. I think that's a responsible thing to do. I I actually went on my first run yesterday with a weighted kit and I only did two miles, kept it light, but I felt great. No, still no injuries. I'm not feeling anything. But man, I am ready to get my strength back. Hell I'm yeah, ready to get girl. strong AF. I'm ready. And I'm for ready to it. work on Olympic lifting. I'm just ready to like to like really just I want to get my new gym set up that I have for Do myself. Some jerk and pulls. Some jerk and pulls <laughs> when the sun goes down. <laughs> <laughs> work on that. Um, so yeah, that that's probably the main one is just um, business for me and my business endeavors outside of what I do for fitness is it's always exciting. It's always very busy. And so, you know, just like I preach to everybody else is that you have to allocate that time for yourself. You have to give your yourself that time to train. And, you know, for the past couple of years, anytime I had had time, I would be out either going on long runs or like really just focus on, um, endurance or getting ready Mm -hmm. to do these like long, um, endurance feats, and now I I really want to just kind of pump the brakes bring, on endurance. Yeah. Work bring on back sprints, strong, Ashley. And I want to be strong. Cool. Really strong. I'm excited for you. Yeah. So that's it. So your guys' homework is, um, I know that the holidays are here. And I think kind of like what Lena said is to understand that the holidays, there's always going to be the holidays. And you have to be fair for yourself. And you have to learn to incorporate the holidays into your lifestyle and you shouldn't beat yourself up. No. By if you want to have like an extra drink or if you want to have like apple pie, eat that, eat that. that. And you, and, and uh, do not feel guilty, but I, now is a time to reflect on 
the good positive things that 2020 has taught us. And it's also an opportunity for us to think about 2021. Start planning. And ahead. the goals that you want to set. Realistic goals. Yes, realistic. Real, yeah, is you can very important. Yeah, let's say you want to go out for the, you know, 2021 CrossFit Games or you just want to get to the CrossFit Games. Let's, well, let's talk about how are you going to start getting into local competitions and competing those and winning? And then what does it look like after that? So having a big goal, but also having small goals along the way that are going to get you to your ultimate goal. So yeah, start thinking about that. That is your guys' homework. Um, I just want to kind of plant that seed because before we know it, we're going to be in 2021. Yeah. Let us know what your goals yeah. are for 2021. Yeah. Send us a message. Yeah. And any Let questions that you guys have, um, any guests that you would like for us to see, you can shoot us a DM or you can email us at reborn at ashleyhorner.co. Yeah. And you can let us know. Give us your questions. We want to hear it all. Yep. So my name is Ashley Horner. This is Lena Del Rey. Cheers. Happy Cheers. holidays. Happy and holidays. And we will catch you guys next time. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.